In this uh, video, I am going to explain solution of uh, this uh, buckling load problem. And I section uh, 400 meter into 200 meter and uh, 20 meter and 6 meter long is used as strut with both in fixed supported. What is the Euler buckling load for the column? Take the elastic modulus of the material column as uh, 200 gigapascal. Okay, this is the problem given. For uh, both in uh, fixed support situation, the column will buckle forming this kind of curvature. In this situation, the Euler buckling load equation is equal, P is equal, Euler buckling load is equal, 4 phi e square EI divided by L square. Then this is the cross section of the column is given. Let me draw the cross section first. Okay, uh, for this problem, the buckling load is uh, given by this equation. 4 phi square EI uh, divided by L square. In this equation, the E elastic modulus of the material is given that is equal to 200 gigapascal, 200 into 10 to the power of 9. Then the L length of the column also given that is equal to 6 meters. So then we have to find the I value. We have to find the I value. So then in this case, which I value we have to substitute in this equation? We have to find the I value which gives a minimum buckling load. So that means we have to find the minimum I value that will give the minimum buckling load. So that means when increasing the load, it will reach the minimum value first. So it will buckle around the minimum I value axis. If you take the cross section, you can see it is uh, symmetric around the two axes. This is the area centroid. Uh, when using this Euler buckling load equation, we are assuming the load acting on the column acted through the area centroid of the cross section. That means that resultant acting on this cross section passing through this uh, centroid. So then we want to find the minimum I value axis and I value. So through this uh, point, we can draw the infinite number of axes. If you take the theta as the variable, we can draw the infinite number of axes. So then we are we can calculate the, the infinite number of i values. So among these i values, which i value we have to we have to substitute in this equation. Okay. Okay. Uh, for any uh, given cross section, let's take uh, arbitrary cross, sec cross section. Let's take the our coordinate system xx and uh, yy axes. Yy xx. Then let's take uh, we know ixx uh, and iyy. If you take the any axis passing through this uh, coordinate point at an angle, let's take uh, theta to the positive x coordinate direction. So then i theta value is uh, given by this equation ix uh, plus uh, iy divided by 2 plus ix minus iy divided by 2 cos uh, 2 theta minus ixy sin 2 theta. Here you can see by varying the theta we can calculate i value any for any inclination. But in this case uh, we want to find the minimum or oh, minimum i value. So uh, for this is equation you can see it's a variable of theta. To find the minimum or maximum value, what we have to do, we are going to derivate this equation and equal to 0. So d i theta, d theta and take uh, by equal to 0, we are getting the i maximum or minimum as i x plus i y divided by 2 plus or minus inside the square root ix minus uh, iy divided by 2 into square plus uh, ixy into square. Okay, using this uh, equation, we are able to calculate i maximum and i minimum value. For the uh, symmetrical cross sections, for the symmetrical cross sections, the product moment of area is equal to 0. If uh, any uh, coordinate axis 
collinear with the symmetric axis as this uh, product moment of area is equal to zero. In this case, you can see the both axis, the it having the two symmetric axis, two perpendicular symmetric axis, the both uh, both the axis are collinear with the coordinate system. So i x y value is equal to zero. Then this equation can be reduced. I maximum or oh, I minimum is equal to I x o oh, I y. Here you can see maximum and minimum I value develop around uh, x axis or oh, y axis. If this is maximum, this one should be minimum. If this is uh, maximum, this one should be minimum. All other I values. All other i values lie in between these two values. So, to find the minimum i value, we have to check i x and i y. For any asymmetrical cross sections, we can find the minimum i value by calculating the i value around the symmetric axis and and calculating the i value perpendicular to the symmetric axis. Okay, let's calculate uh, i x x and i y i y y. So then you can find the minimum uh, i value. First of all, I'm going to calculate the i x x. Here, x x, I'm going to consider this uh, total rectangular area. Then I'm going to subtract this uh, rectangular area i value from the total. If you take the total 1 over 12, the b 200, total height is equal 400, 400 into cube minus uh, two areas here to subtract. 2 into 1 over 12, if you take the one area, this uh, length is equal 90, h height is equal 360 into cube. So then i x x value we are getting 366.8 uh, into 10 to the power of uh, 6 millimeter into 4. Then I am going to calculate the i y y. When uh, to calculate the i y value, I am going to consider these uh, three areas separately. So I am going to add these three area i value uh, together to calculate the i y y. If you take uh, this area, one over twelve into b, this uh, height is equal to twenty two hundred into cube. They said two areas, two similar areas, so I am multiplying by two plus this uh, area 1 over 12. This length is equal to 360 bh cube 20 into cube. So then I yy we can calculate 26.91 into uh, 10 to the power of 6 millimeter into. Uh, 4. This is i y y. Then here we have found the two i values. You can see the around y y axis the i value minimizes. That value is equal to 26.91. So then I am going to substitute this i value in the buckling load equation to calculate the Euler buckling load. P is equal 4 times phi square E, elastic modulus of the material that 200 into uh, 10 to the power of 9 into I value 26.91 into 10 to the power of uh, 6. Here I am going to convert uh, millimeter 4 into meter into 4. You have to multiply 10 to the power of minus 12. So the 10 to the power of minus 6. Then uh, divided by 6 into square. 6 into square. So then we can calculate the buckling load. The P Euler buckling load for this problem is equal to 5.9 mega newton. Okay, this is how you are solving this kind of uh, buckling analysis uh, problem. I think uh, you all got a clear idea how to solve this kind of problem. Okay, see you next time. Thank you.